Hello everyone. Safes are generally complicated and difficult to open in real life, and that's why most video game developers will prefer to simplify down the mechanics of their safe to streamline the user experience, and that's fine. Um, they'll usually do something like this, which is unlike any safe that I've ever seen in real life. Or something along these lines where you can rotate the dial any which way to get to the number and then you just press X and it inputs the code for you. And there's always just this way that you just press in the code and that's much, that's very simple to program. So all of these are, are quite easy to program. But I didn't want to do that because I wanted my safe to behave more like real safes. So how does a real safe open? As we know, it you have to turn it one way a certain number of times to reset it, and then you land on the first digit in the code, and then you turn it the other way for a certain number of times, and you land on the second digit, and then you finally turn it the other way to the last digit of the code, and once you land on that digit, it'll go ahead and open for you. So how do we program this for a game? Well, I'll show you what I did. I don't know if it's ideal, but... Hopefully, people can get together and help me make this better, if possible. I It works for my applications, so I'll just show you, go ahead and show you an action here, what we got going on. So, so this is my safe, and this is the dial of the safe that we will be rotating to get the input and tell how we're doing and putting in the code. So you can see right here is all the information about what's currently going on inside the lock, basically. Each of these arrays correspond with each digit in the safe code. So you can make these arrays any length, so your safe code could be also theoretically be any length. And starting from here, digit left turn, since each of these corresponds with each digit in the safe code. If it's true, it's telling the script that that digit needs the dial to be turning left. And if it's false, then that needs the dial to be turning right. Digit passes uh, for each of these corresponding with each digit in the safe code. It is saying how many times we have to rotate the dial for us to progress onto the next digit in the code. And then digit set is storing true or false if the, each digit in the code has been set. And then finally, this array of integers for digit angles is storing the corresponding angle which represents each digit in the safe code combination. Okay, so I'll just show you it in action here. So if we turn the dial to the left, every time we pass 90 degrees, which corresponds with the angle of the first digit in the code, which is what we're currently on, the, f the current digit is zero, which because it's an array, zero is actually the first position in the array. So. That's representing 90 degrees. Every time we pass 90 degrees, it increments pass count up one, as long as we are turning left. So you'll see that as we get to 90 degrees again, it's gonna increment pass count up again. And then on the third time, we want to land on it. And what's happened is digit set has updated the first digit to be true. Pass count is reset to zero. Current digit is set to one. As you can see, what will actually happen is if I keep turning it left, now that I've already set the first digit, it's gonna reset the lock because you went the wrong way, you went past the first digit and the lock is no longer being unlocked. So if we go back and we rotate it left three times and land on 90, you can see digit one is set and turning left is set to false, so we want to keep turning right of the second digit in the code. 
And that's going to set Pat's count to one, and we just keep going. Pass count two. And then we want to land on the digit for this. Now we're on the third digit, so you can see digit two was set to true. Now we turn the other way, turning left. And once you reach the first digit once again, bam, all three digits are set, and your safe is unlocked. Okay, so that is how the code works overall. Now I'll go into the script. So here are all our variables, all these arrays that I showed you. This can be any arbitrary number of positions in the array, which would correspond with numbers in the safe code. Um, what I didn't show you is these public integers. So minimum degrees is the smallest number of degrees that's going to register in the code. So you can make this one. I haven't tested it. My theory is that the smaller you make this and the more precise you make the safe dial, the more you run the risk of slipping and like missing numbers and things like that and the code just not working exactly right. So I'm not 100% sure that that would be a problem in application, but you'd have to test that further. I've not gone into that because this level of precision works fine for my application, so it seems to be good. So. That's the minimum degrees. Dial number angles is a little more confusing. So that's the increment of angles in between each number on your safe dial itself. So mine are 45 degrees apart as my dial is an octagon. And so that's the reason that my dial number angles is 45. It's good if this is a multiple of 360. I think it kind of has to be, or not a multiple, but you know what I mean. If it divides into 360, I think that would be the best. I don't know if it would be a problem if it doesn't, but that's, that's what I know. Then you have all the arrays that we talked about. Pass count, storing how many times you've passed the number that you're currently on. Bool pass reset is used to make sure that when we pass the number, it sets that to false until you move off of that number again, just so that we don't increment the pass count up more than one time. And the current digits just storing what digit we're on currently, obviously. Turning left is updating all the time to tell us whether we're turning left or not. And old angle and current angle are used to update turning left. So now I'll show you kind of, I'll tell you what each chunk kind of does. So first thing we do is just reset everything if we are turning in, an, in a direction that is not the same as the direction that is wanted by our current digit. So the, the Boolean that's co corresponding in digit left turn each of these is corresponding with a digit in the safe code, whether it needs to be turning left or turning right for that particular digit that we're on. And if we're not, then what this is just simply doing, then what this is just simply doing is setting pass count to zero, current digit to zero, and then we have a for loop that is going through our digit set array and setting each of them to false. That way we just know all of the digits are set to false and we're, we're reset back to the beginning. This is important. I'm resetting the dial rotation back to zero every time you go over 360 degrees. I'm not sure if local Euler angles uh, goes negative, but this is just here just in case, I guess. Um, but if you ever go beyond 360, it resets it to zero because it's important because if you don't reset it back to zero, the rotation of the dial object will just keep increasing forever as you rotate it or going negative as you rotate it the other direction. So that won't work with our script. 
So we're setting the next we're setting the current angle to whatever we round the rotation of the dial object to. Um, you divide the rotation by the minimum degrees that we set and then multiply that by the minimum degrees again and that just rounds the angle to of whatever multiple it is of that minimum degrees that we've set. Okay, so pass reset, this is just resetting the pass reset if we are if our current angle has changed from the current digit. So the only reason pass reset is set to false is because we've incremented pass count. So if we've incremented pass count and then um, the current angle is no longer equal to the current digit angle, which means we've moved, that means we want to set pass reset back to zero or back to true. And that way it'll only increment once and we can reset it for next time. As long as we continue to move in the same direction, it'll, it'll pass every time we rotate it fully. This chunk updates every 45 degrees, which is the dial number angles. So this is just making it so if you turn it five degrees the wrong way, it won't reset, but if you turn it all the way to the next dial number, that's when it takes into account that you're going in a direction it resets. So that kind of is setting the level of precision in your safe code, in your, in your dial. So here is where we actually increment the pass count if the current angle of the dial is equal to the angle that we want for the current digit then it'll increment pass count one time, set it to false, and that way it won't increment again until we reset the pass count or the pass reset. And then down here is how we tell if our pass count is greater than or equal to the digit passes that we're looking for. So that's how many passes we need to increment to the next digit. If we've gotten there, we want to increment to the next digit. Digit set at current digit is set to true. And then if you're not on the last digit, meaning if the current digit is not equal to whatever the last digit in the array is, it's going to increment current digit up one and it's going to set turning left to whatever we want for the next digit so that it doesn't just automatically reset because if if it detects that we're turning the dial in the wrong direction for the current digit we're on it'll reset it so we just simply re set turning left as soon as we increment the new digit and that way as long as you from that point forward turn in the correct direction it'll continue on and we set pass count to zero just so we can restart right there so I can go into a little more detail about this section here. We are updating any time the dial actually changes what number we're on in the dial, okay? So the way that we tell if we're currently on a number on the dial is we, set cur is we say if current angle mod dial number changes, which is the d increment of degrees between the dial numbers, equals zero. So what does mod do? It just divides these two numbers and then returns their remainder. So if the remainder is zero, we know that current angle is, is a multiple of dial number ch angles. So right here, if the current angle has changed to a different dial number, we know this if the current angle is less than the old angle or it's greater than the old angle. So if it's less than the old angle, that means turning left equals false. And if it's greater than the old angle, we're gonna set turning left equal to true. And the only reason I'm checking for if the old angle is zero or 360 is just so we don't update turning left 
just if we're resetting from 360 back to zero because that can cause some slight issues it actually large issues with the way it reset it'll reset the lock if you if you turn it all the way around which doesn't work at all for us so this just mitigates that i'm not sure if it's the best solution but i hope that makes sense as to why i did that and then at the end either way we're setting the old angle to whatever the current angle is but we are rounding it to the, whatever the nearest dial number angle is to the current angle so so that's how my safe unlocker script works. Let me know, please, if you have any ideas to make it better or more consistent. Otherwise, I hope this was helpful for you. Goodbye.